football for a while. It's one of the quieter weekends in the football championship, but there's nothing quiet about our two games, nor indeed is there anything quiet about our panel. I'm delighted to welcome Pat Spillan, Eamon O'Hara and Desi Dolan. And later we'll be debating the pros and cons of the black card with Pac and Aini. But first of all, the action. And presently we'll see Fermanagh versus Antrim. But first, Pat McAuliffe reflects on last night's clash in Munster between Limerick and Tipperary. There was a good start to the weekend for the Tipperary County when their footballers won their first Munster Senior Football Championship match in 11 years when defeating Limerick at the Gaelic Grounds. The Premier County came into the match without a provincial football win since defeating Waterford in the 2003 Championship. Despite playing against the wind, Tipperary kicked the two opening points, a free from Conor Sweeney and this score from full forward Michael Quinlivan. The home side's first score came from an own Hanrahan free, one of five Limerick converted in the opening half. Then came the only black card of the game, shown by Wicklow referee Anthony Nolan to Tipperary cornerback Kieran MacDonald for this foul on Ian Ryan. The forward converted the free and MacDonald was replaced by John Coughlin. Within seconds we had the opening goal of the match, after Barry Grogan availed of an error from goalkeeper Donal O'Sullivan to finish the ball to the net. Tipperary were at this stage playing good football as a unit and they stretched their advantage when defender Colin O'Reardon left six points between the teams. Philip Austin then got in on the scoring act when fisting this point for the winners, before Limerick got their first point from play when Ryan kicked his fourth score just before half time to leave the score 1-7 to six points at the break. The visitors now had the wind at their backs and from the throw-in midfielder George Hannigan gave them the perfect second-half start. Then came a crucial second goal for Tip and a quickly taken free set up the inform Austin to leave his side eight points in front. We then had the first of two penalties in the game. Ian Fahey was brought down by goalkeeper O'Sullivan who only received a yellow card and then dived to save Barry Grogan's penalty kick. Midfielder Dara Tracy replied for the home side with a good score. Before this fisted effort from Brian Fox left Tip cruising. But another penalty awarded for a foot block saw Owen Hanrahan score expertly and give his side some hope. Two further points, including this one from attacking halfback Ian Corbett, left just four points between the teams. But Peter Creedon's side set up a semi final meeting with Cork with the last two points from Grogan to see it finish. Tipperary, two goals and 14 points. Limerick, one goal and 11 points. Paul and Tip, it's our first win in Munster in 11, 11 seasons. And, um, you know, we came down here and um, we felt it was a winnable game. And, you know, the players uh, put in a fair shift and we, we ran out six points winners against the Sand of Limerick team. One black card in the match tonight. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, a tough decision on the cornerback from, from Tipperary. Ten minutes into a championship game to have to come off. Uh, uh, it, but the rules state that if, if an attacking player gets pulled down deliberately, that they, they deserve a black card. It's, again, just a tough call on Kieran. Like, Fermanagh's last win in the Ulster Championship came in 2010 and with home advantage they were favourites to overcome an Antrim side whose last win in the province was in the 2009 Ulster semi-final. And it was the Urn men who were quickest out of the blocks when Sean Quigley gave them the lead 20 seconds into the game. But for the next half an hour it was Antrim who were completely dominant. Conor Murray set up Kevin Niblock to put them two points ahead after five minutes. Paul McCann then had the game's first real goal chance after breaking through for Man's defence, but he had to settle for a point after Chris Snow's fine save. With Kevin Niblock orchestrating up front, Antrim were picking off scores at ease. Michael McCann's wonderful point had them seven points to one in front after 24 minutes. And seven minutes before the break, the Saffron scored the game's opening goal. Tomas McCann found Brian Neeson, and he finished clinically to give Antrim an 11-point lead. Fermanagh looked dead and buried, but Sean Quigley gave them hope in the 32nd minute when he fisted a long ball to the net. Antrim won't be too happy with their defending. 
And in injury time at the end of the half, Fermanagh captain Owen Donnelly fired over to leave the home side training by five points at the break. Seconds after the restart, the Urnman had a great goal chance when Paul McCusker found himself in space, but he had to settle for a point. Three minutes later, though, Antrim pulled clear again when Tomás McCann fed Kevin Niblock and the St. Gauls marksman made no mistake with a neat finish. Antrim were looking really comfortable and Niblock's beautiful point with the outside of his boot put them nine points clear. And that lead was extended to 11 midway through the half when the impressive Brian Neeson fisted over. But Fermanagh wouldn't lie down. Former All-Star defender Barry Owens gave them a lifeline blasting to the net after being sent through by Sean Quigley six minutes from time. And a minute into injury time with Antrim panicking, Fermanagh got back to within two points when Marty O'Brien blasted to the net to set up a nervy remaining minute. And the home side could have snatched an amazing comeback victory with the last kick of the game, but Ryan McCluskey was denied on the line by Antrim's Kevin O'Boyle. An upset in Ulster, and Antrim moved forward to face Donegal in the provincial semi-final. Final score, Antrim 2-18, Fermanagh 3-13. Well, uh, one thing's for certain, uh, the Ulster Championship came alive today, so I did. Uh, certain anybody that paid in there, in there today got their, money, their money's worth, so they did a cracking game of football. Uh, plenty of goals, plenty of drama and, and some brilliant football and uh, uh, probably a, a funny there that you'll not see this year again, so you'll not. It came within a whisker of maybe winning the game, so I give our players tremendous credit for hanging in. They will know that over the 70 minutes there were long periods when they weren't as good as they're capable of being. We will address those things, but we will look very, very positively towards the, the qualifiers in three weeks' time. Well, Eamon O'Hara, a fantastic win for Antrim, who've been in the doldrums a bit and real battling performance, but it was a lousy look on Fermanagh at the end there, wasn't it? That's, that's championship football days, you know. Um, Antrim really win for this game today. Um, they languished in Division 4, third from bottom. Um, and, you know, Baker did actually mention in, a, in an article during the week that Antrim football in the league didn't reflect exactly how they were actually going and from the world goal they really went for it and you know blew for man out of the water everybody was expecting a for man to win particularly being in Brewster Park and uh, you know Antrim really went for it and yeah. deserved the game a, a, at the end of it yeah Pat Ulster football you've been a critic of Ulster football that was a high scoring thriller yeah I, I'm I'm usually negative about Ulster football and and that's merely reflecting what's happening on the field which is usually negativity and two teams trying to stop each other for playing today's match was an absolutely outstanding very positive attacking game of football 36 scores 13 different scorers five goals and 21 points scored from play uh, this was uh -huh. an Antrim team that scored a mere six points last year but I was looking through the, the, the backroom staff and while Baker's in charge they, he has his son, one of the greatest forwards to come out of Ulster in the last 20 years, Paddy Bradley, as a forwards coach. And maybe there's a lesson there that could be taken out of tonight, that instead of being overpacked with an, uh, various statisticians and dietitians and <laughs> strength and conditioning coaches and performance coaches and psychologists, the one thing every team should have is a forwards coach, because to win a game, you must score more than the opposition. Yeah. So, well done to Antrim for an absolutely great performance. And well done too to Fermanagh, who came to know in the last, there were 11 points yeah. down, was it scored in, uh, to, scored 2 4 to 1 points in the last 10 yeah. minutes, and only for that shot being cleared off the goal. And so, look, tonight, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. If it's a bad game, it's a bad game. That was a damn good game of football, and I'm happy. Oh, I'm always nervous when the duck emerges on a Sunday night. <laughs> but it's a good night. It's a good, it's a good night. night. Yeah. Desi Dolan. <laughs> In the same way that you know Antrim have had a bad few years, Tipperary have had a really lousy few years in Munster. Yeah, and it must be hard to keep going when that's it, happening. Well, it's hard to believe that it's 11 years since their yeah. last win in the Munster Championship. But all the work that they've been doing underage has been incredible the last couple of years. They're very successful minor teams, very successful under-21 teams. And players like Michael Quinlevin and Connor Sweeney and Barry Grogan, these players are excellent players. And I really do think that Tipperary is in a good place if the players like this coming through. All right then, so moving on, We've had the other row in Munster, Pat, you know, Cork and Kerry seeded. Tip aren't, Limerick aren't happy, Clare aren't happy. How do you feel about that? And they didn't, and they boycotted the, the Munster Championship launch, they boycotted yeah. the McGrath Cup. But maybe now, they have a point, though. Uh, <coughs> I